can just look wherever. You can look deep into my eyes if you want, like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not <a bad> one <laughs> at all. Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books. And I've got Mercedes <laughs> here with me. We've had a lovely weekend, haven't we, Mercedes? Yeah. What's been the highlight? When you didn't cook the cannelloni <laughs> properly. <laughs> yeah. I cooked cannelloni on Friday night. I didn't cook it properly. We got it out. I even dished it up. Yeah. And then I was like, sorry guys, I have to slope that back in. Slopped it back in, yeah. I was going to say my highlight, Arctic foxes. Oh yeah, I did like the Arctic foxes. We went to a place called Wildwood, which has got... I was going to say indigenous, but do I mean indigenous? No, indigenous means when they're only from here. So what that's what I mean then? Madagascar. Native, so they were native. Native. Yeah. Animals that were native to this country. Yeah. And... Have died, have died out. Have died out. So and they're Arctic foxes. And they've got like a little like... Yeah, little grins, got really big smiles, haven't they? <laughs> right, of course they. And they were very good. Were but the highlight for you was the uncooked uh, cannelloni. No, it's when, it, when it was cooked, it was lovely. Oh, well, that's so yeah. good. Yeah. So we thought we would do today. We did no prep for a video at all. We thought we would do today a Q and A. So we asked a few people, asked a few people, put it out on Twitter and mm. said any questions for us, and we got a few back, didn't we? Yeah, got a few back. And ready? we're going to answer them for you now. You ready? For right now, let's start with. Oh, I should have been so prepared. Yeah, I was going to say, this is as prepared as our podcast. <laughs> oh, the podcast. <laughs> we just get on, don't we? Just, yeah. pop, just pop those headphones on, slump on the sofa, yeah. and just talk for two hours. Yeah, and then hope it works. Seems to be going all right, though, yeah. should I? Right, first question is from ChattyManned1 um, on Instagram. She says, do either of you actually judge a book by its cover? And if so, have you ever been disappointed by a judgment? Yeah, I always judge books by their cover. So do I. Guaranteed, definitely, 100%. One of my favourite books ever... That I, uh, my favourite book covers ever, which I haven't read, but I've heard isn't very good. You might have read it, Gold Fame Citrus. Yeah, by Claire Fay. Yeah, Watkins. I agree because I thought that was going to be amazing, and I, I loved the first hundred pages, and then complete nose dive. I haven't even picked it up just because I've heard Gorgeous people cover. say the cover is Stunning. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. But I've never picked it up because I've heard lots yeah, of people say it. But it's just beautiful. The Natural Wire Things by Charlotte Wood. Well, is, do you know what we're saying? As well. We can get both of these books here. Yeah. Hold that. Make stuff useful. This is Gold Fame. Oh, the other one. It's tucked away properly, isn't it? Well, this is gorgeous, this one. The natural and way you haven't of things. Read this. I, I haven't read this. Like it. I didn't enjoy it, and I pretty much picked it up because of the cover. The cover is even better than I can yeah, even imagine. it's really good, isn't it? Oh, look at that as well. Yeah, there's loads of little things tucked in there. Chains and... Well, yeah, it's a bit like a um, vegetarian front cover. Yeah, hidden things, yeah. Yeah, very good. But so that, I'd heard was crap and... But and she can really write, stuff. but she just got lost towards the end, I think. Not worth it, then? I, I've kept it. Mm. I've still kept it on my shelves because I think she could become a really, really good writer. And I think some of the extracts are beautiful, but I think she just got. She's not a plot focused writer and no. she went with plot and it didn't work. I do like yellow covers as well, do yeah. you? Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Look at these two here. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was so interesting. Yeah. Don't yeah. Talking away about books. What? So have you got one that you've um, ever judged by its cover? An example to put you on the spot. I mean, I judged. Oh, you said this? this. That yeah. counts, yeah. yeah. So there's two. That's all you're going to get. Yeah. Next one is, oh yeah, quite a lot of people asked us about audiobooks yeah. and non-fiction books on Audible, on audio, how do we listen to audiobooks. Yeah. We did a whole podcast about this, guys. Yeah. I'll link it down about below. A week or so ago. Literally, probably about half an hour chatting about audiobooks yeah, and yeah, Audible yeah. and things like that. So do check that out because we talk a lot about that there. So we won't answer that here. We'll enable you a link yeah. to go and see yeah. that somewhere else. Simon from Savage Reads. Do you know him? I think I've heard of him. Bit of a stalker, isn't he? Yeah. Won't leave us alone. No. <laughs> we adore Simon very deeply. Simon says, which books have we recommended the other that you've really loved and any you've really not? And he'd also like to know what our favourite mythical beasts are. Should we start with the mythical beasts? Yeah. Ease ourselves in? Mine's Unicorn, which is a bit rubbish. Yeah, you've got so many unicorns dotted around. I noticed that yesterday. <laughs> not banging about. <laughs> not real ones. No, just like loitering no. in the background. Yeah. Probably Unicorn, which is like a bit of a cop-out because they're very mainstream, aren't they? Yeah. But I just think they're really fun. But I also, like, you know when we were at Wildwood yesterday, mm. do you think that lynxes are a bit like mythical beasts? Yeah, they do look a bit mythical, yeah. I don't mean. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking about, maybe I'm thinking of a sphinx then. Yeah, lynxes look like the sort of creature that could, like, just start talking in a human voice, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favourite mythical beast? Selkies. Because it's like part animal, and they turn like seals in the ocean, and then they yes. take their skin off and become people. I think that's real nice. That's a really and it's linked good to Mercedes. Well. That's much better than my. And I like sirens one. as well, like evil mermaids that sing yeah. sailors to their doom. Yeah, sexy mermaids. That's good ones. What about you, David? Mythical creature. Yeah. Don't know. Uh, the dog from um, <laughs> Neverending Story. 
We'll see then. Got wings. Dog with wings. Yeah, he flies. Johnny, you got any wings? Big dog. I don't know. Some sort of. Do you like fluffy, cute? <laughs> Um, fluffy, cute, nice mythical creatures. Minnie? Oh, yeah. She's quite <laughs> mythical. Yeah. She's yeah, she's magnificent. Yeah. You can stick a pair of wings on Minnie and oh, like, she'd be yeah. like a, a flying <laughs> kitty. Yeah. She's she is angel. mythical. She's just ignoring us now. Yeah, she's, she's like, completely not us. Guys. Oh, the second part of that question from Simon was, which books have we recommended yeah, okay. to the other that you've loved and any you've really not? So... I got you three black spruce for Christmas. You got me three black spruce for Christmas, which I really, really love. A lot of like Daphne de Maurier as well. That was both. That was a you. Maybe Simon did like made this question so that I can mention the fact that you both you collectively yeah, yeah. got me onto Daphne de Maurier. Is that what your plan was, Simon? Yeah. Um, Daphne de Maurier is something that I probably would never have picked up had it not been for yours and Simon's hype. Yeah. Because I just didn't. I was just like, that doesn't seem like my bag, and yeah. I love it. I don't think you've ever recommended me anything that I've liked because oh. you're not very good at recommending stuff. No, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> no. not very good at Cavaloni either. What did you... What did you... The Kate Atkinson oh, the Kate one. Atkinson. I, I said you should... Yeah. But I, I really think there's much more to Kate... Like, you've started no, with the agree, crime yeah. side of Kate Atkinson and there's other parts of Kate Atkinson that I really think you're going to love. Yeah. You've, so you've I'll have that me. Yeah. because I think you're going to love Life After Life and I think you're going to love uh, Behind the Scenes at the Museum. Yeah. But... At the moment, you you liked it though, didn't you? No, you no, just, definitely. One hundred percent. And I now want to read all of that stuff, so definitely. Yeah. So I'll have that one, I think. Yeah, you can have that. But yeah, and the Essex Serpent as well, which you recommended me. Yeah. That you just recommended, and I, I really, really love. So. Yeah. What I'm saying, Mercedes, is thank you so much for the opportunity to read these books. <laughs> thank you. Uh, next question is from Lula, eighty-seven, eighty-seven. Which book was the turning point in your reading life, from a younger reader to an adult reader? You don't think you can remember, do you? I'm really trying to. Yeah, see, I think the first adult book I read was We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver, which is ridiculous because it's, it's really, it's quite a difficult read. Yeah. Um, but I know that um, Half of a Yellow Sound and Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda and Gozi yeah. Kichiyo was some of my first adult fiction and also Haruki Murakami. I think those three were the people who... How did you pick those? How did you come about them? I'd read everything that was in my small local Waterstones children's section. You know, oh my God. <laughs> no chance. Um, so I just sort of thought, well, I'll have a look, look what's going on in the adult section. And I think at the time, those books would just come out, and they would probably face forward with the Waterstones t- um, staff pick on. Right. And so I thought, oh, well, they sound good, and I picked yeah. them up. Because the Lionel Shriver yeah. cup, like, we need to talk about Kevin cover, although I think I might have the film cover. It's not, like, beautiful. You'd no, be it's like, not. Oh, no, no, that's no. eye catch him. No, but I think I probably like the description, because it's quite dark. And yeah. Weird. I really can't think of anything. I can't think of that the point in my life where I was like, oh, I'm reading adult stuff now. Mm. I honestly can't. What a rubbish answer. Well, we tried. <laughs> we can but try in this life. We can. Next question is Katie from Yatey Kates on Twitter says, one book do you think the other absolutely has to read this year? So I'm going to say I absolutely want you to read Life After Life this year. Yeah, I will definitely read it. I think you're going to really love it. I think it's going to... Yeah. You're going to really, really enjoy it. There's just a, like this bit of... Now, is it magical realism or is it speculative when there's a bit of time travel? I'd call that speculative. Speculative. Mm. And, yeah, I just think you're going to really enjoy it. There's so much in-depth... Well, you, you found that, didn't you, from Casey Streets, how much yeah, in-depth yeah. they go into, like, characters yeah, and things yeah, like that. Definitely. And So I think you're going to really love that. Yeah. What would you say me? Oh, shit. Because I'm reading The Essex Serpents. You can't have that. We've got the Unseen World, Unseen and World. by Liz Moore, and that was one of my three faves. So you... That sort of snuck by me as being one of your faves until yeah, the last like, video. Yeah, a few people said that. It's because I, I did it in a triple review. Yeah. Um, and then it was right at the end of the year, so I didn't get a big chance to mention it a lot. No. Because it was so close to the end of the year, but I thought it was phenomenal. It's a big old... It's chunky. Big old bruiser, though, isn't it? It's a really fast read. I've read it in oh, like two sittings, yeah. Yeah, that I will read. It's on my, um, as I said in the podcast, slump my buster. slump buster pile. Yeah. That's normally up on this chair that you're sat on at the moment. But yeah, we've had to, to move it so I can sit here. We've had to put Mercedes on that chair just so we can get her <laughs> views across. Um, Tudor Geek says, what country or area do you most love to travel to in a novel? It's a good question. For me, it's anywhere that's like mountainous, coastal, sort of has that gothic vibe. So like Scotland, yeah. really getting into... The idea of like Norway, Iceland, mm-hmm. and also Canada. I love stuff set in rural Canada. Do. Like island stuff, yeah. stuff on the island. So anything that's sort of rural with some coldness yeah. and isolation involved. Anything like that. Isolation. Do you know what that comes from? <laughs> no. It's from the Mighty Boosh, isn't it? Anyone? Oh, I've not seen the Mighty Boosh. Oh, I haven't yet. <laughs> so uncool. It's probably a bit young for you, though, isn't it? No. 
it was like at its height when I was at uni and you were a bit younger than me, so maybe. Yeah, I just didn't like the look of it. You're out doing cool things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was sitting at home learning yeah. the words to Mighty Boo songs. Um, my favourite country, I love books set in Ireland. I, I, think, I, I, I really love books set in Ireland. I've been to Ireland a few times, I've got friends from Ireland, and I just, I, we like it over there, don't we, David? It's lovely, it's beautiful. Beautiful, so I like that sort of thing. Also, Scandinavia, but we're both like into that, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, coastal stuff. I always can imagine. So, when I was reading Call of the Undertow, for instance, yeah. I've been to a place in Pembrokeshire called Broadhaven where we go on holiday sort of every other year with friends. And I was reading Call of the Undertow as if it was set in Pembrokeshire. And I feel like when I read books set on the coast, I imagine that in my mind's eye, yeah. it's so crisply yeah, done. Yeah, I agree, yeah. I can completely picture it. Yeah, yeah. and it always surprises yeah. me. I, I'm never as intrigued by a novel that was set somewhere warm. No. And I don't connect to it as much. I guess because I've grown up somewhere coastal, and you've obviously got the connection with the holiday. Yeah. I can envisage it a lot better. But yeah, Mum, it's just so perfect. Another book I've done that with, Jenny Fagan... Oh, Sunlight Pilgrims. Sunlight Pilgrims. Yeah, I could picture that really I well. I could yeah, see that, that really so well. amazingly. That's, mm. an, that's set in Scotland, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. So Scotland, Ireland, Scandinavia, Canada. Yeah. Should we go on holiday these places? Yeah. Should we go now? Yeah. We could have done if we'd have won the uh, accumulator. Yeah, we, we did a football that. accumulator yesterday. Didn't win that, did we? No. £250,000 we could have had lying yeah, in the pockets. Yeah, brilliant. Could have been on a nice... We could have been in Scandinavia now. We could have been. been? Well, imagine, do people actually do that, do you think? Just turn up at the airport and be like, oh, I'm going to buy a flight to there. Well, yeah, as long as you've got your passport, yeah. And you can just buy some new stuff when you get there. David's passport, when does that run out? Soon, isn't it? You couldn't have come. Yeah, it's already run out. Oh, I would have had to leave David behind. <laughs> just us three go. <laughs> Sorry, David. <laughs> do you mind doing the washing up? Well, that would have been sad, wouldn't it? We'll send you photos. Well, fair enough. I would have got the money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah. put the we did the we did the accumulator. The outfit, yeah. We were the brains behind the Proved outfit. It. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't have proved it. Could have proved it. Um, oh, and a favourite film to TV adaptation. So I love. Oh, fav- favourite book like film or TV yeah, adaptations. Yeah, yeah. North and South, the BBC miniseries. And I will watch that because you have been going on at me about that. And I going on at me. Yeah. <laughs> I watched it before I read it. Yeah. Because I don't mind you knowing the end. How classic. I read it, it for A level. Um, and I love Jane Eyre. The, the film, yeah, that's really Fassbender good. And, and Mia, Mia, I never know her surname. She's a very good Jane Eyre because she's, she's is a, as I imagine Jane Eyre to be. She's like plain in a beautiful way. Yeah, and like a quiet power, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. Um, I also like Room, the adaptation, the film adaptation they do. The film to the book. The film, I've read the book a number of times, and I know what happens. And in the film, I was still like, yeah, yeah. I just felt so tense the whole time. Yeah, I think they did it quite well. And the little lad in it was amazing. Yeah, he Jace, was good. Jacob yeah. Tremblay, he was really good. Yeah. yeah, I think they did. I I really really enjoyed that. Um, any other? Revenant Road, I love that. I haven't seen that or read that. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, romantic comedy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Romantic yeah, comedy with Leon. If you liked Titanic, you'll love yeah. Revolutionary Road. <laughs> no, I haven't read it, but I I absolutely must as well. Yeah. What's another one I was thinking of? Oh, a, a film that I enjoyed. A, Booked film adaptation that I enjoyed the film much more. Um, you saying that about Room was the help. I've not read or seen the film. The film is so much better than the book. Yeah, I've not bothered with either. It's just very Lord well of the done. Rings. I think is like that. I think the books are so badly written. I only ever got as far as the middle of the two towers. So yeah, yeah you're right. And I really enjoy the films. He's got great imagination. David's shaking his head because he hates them. Yeah, but um, you haven't like. I think now, as a grown up, you'd be proper invested in them. We love yeah. the films, don't we? Well, I yeah, love yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And I love, like, the bit at the end, I've never, I've watched Return of the King so many times, the bit at the end, when they all, when they, when they all, she said, you bow to no one. And then everyone bows to them. Oh my, oh my God, God. I know. I'm really emotional. <laughs> I'm thinking about it's, it. It's devastating, that scene. Yeah. I sobbed when I first My friends, there. you bow to no one. And then one. everyone it's goes, It's going to be like the, yeah, it's going to be like the tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's phenomenal, it's phenomenal. It's scene. amazing. Yeah. David, we must watch it. That's a real good, like... Well, my, my friends and I, Ryan and Ed, hi Ryan and Ed, and Alex was there too, um, we got back from a horrible boozy holiday to Tenerife, and on the day we got back, we um, we watched all the Lord of the Rings back to back, from so the director's yeah. cut, my god, it was like 17 hours, we were exhausted by the end, I was like, come on Frodo, you can do it, they're very good, oh David, yeah. I want you to re-watch them, yeah. I've never seen any of the Hobbit ones, <laughs> you've not seen any of it, I've never seen any of the Hobbit I've ones, I've seen them once, done. The Hobbits aren't as good. No? No. But I do really fancy Martin Freeman. 
I know you have said this. It's a bit weird. That's a common one, isn't it? Yeah, that's not scary. No. I, I, it blows my mind that they've adapted that book exactly. into three exactly. films. Yeah, 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 exactly. Have they embellished it quite a lot? Yeah, and they've taken um, history. He wrote loads of history books yeah. alongside, and I think they've taken loads of stuff from the histories and added it in. And, and what was like a children's book, a fun romp, becomes this big epic dark adventure. Again. Yeah. Mm, unnecessary. I won't bother with it. Well, I probably won't I mean, they're quite fun, but they're so not as good. you were saying, we watched a bit, we watched a clip of it, didn't we? Because we were watching Luke Evans. I'd like to watch YouTube. The Hobbit, because I've not seen The Hobbit, but I've already seen Lord of the Rings. Okay. Yeah. Stanley's giving it one chance. I'll just do that on me. That's minute. it. Me and Minnie will watch that. <laughs> jo Marie Minnie says... Minnie doesn't like it either. Minnie does like she it, she told, told me. me. <laughs> she says she thinks... I'm just trying to think there's any... I can imagine her being carried by a Hobbit in a backpack. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Joe Marie says our favourite literary character of all time and why? <laughs> Who? Hermione. Hermione. We both love Hermione. Yeah, I love Luna as well though. Luna is a very good literary character. Yeah. Hermione though, when I was talking, I did a video about International Women's Day and I was talking about how like she made me realise at quite a young age that it's fine to be bookish and to be into stuff and yeah. like to be unashamed about that. Yeah. So she's, she's just wonderful, isn't she? Yeah, I mean I like her because she's flawed because she wasn't particularly nice of all at the start of the first. She was bossy no, she and quite is. rude and quite sort of pushy. Yeah. But through mixing with more children, she sort of yeah. softens those edges, doesn't she? But I imagine she'd, all, she'd always obviously been very academic and she'd probably not had many friends or anything at schools yeah. before and not had to worry about it. But yeah. when you're living in a situation like yeah, you are, yeah. you have to have friends. Because she's not any like she's not friends with any of the girls, is she? Maybe no. she's just not likeable to girls, but I love her. Yeah, but I think if you're actually in school with someone, he kept going. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. Here she goes again. Yeah. You used to do that. Yeah. No. <laughs> like people like <gasps> out of their seats going for the yeah. answers. No, no, me too. No, me neither. <laughs> um, my, another out of mine is Bridget Jones. Like, I have yeah, re. Re-re- you've them. never read it. I'm not sure it's your bag, but I recently reread it and it was written 20 years ago. It's like it was written today. Like, it's so yeah. relevant to what everything that's happening. Nothing's changed in 20 years. The only thing is, is that people are like, this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I really haven't watched this. Or so. But everything, and she's just, she's got an amazing, she's got a, a, the best, her mother is a, such a brilliant story piece within that. Mm. She's just so funny, the things she says, she's such a busybody. Yeah. And her reactions to dealing with her mother are just amazing. I just really think she's, mm. I think she's amazing. I love Cora from The Essex Serpent. Yes, I love Cora mm. from The Essex Serpent. She's really good. She's very, very good, yeah. And she's like, unbothered about other people's yeah, reactions, isn't going, she? Yeah, she's going for it, yeah. I'd love, I haven't got to the complete end now, but I really would love to know more about how she ended up marrying that chap that, yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, that's never revealed, is it? No. Because no. it was just like, she didn't care about him so much, did she? No, but maybe she was forced into it or something. Yeah, but I'd like to know more about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Do a sequel and a prequel yeah. and a whole series, seven yeah. books. So yeah, there's our favourite literary characters. What have we got here? Cheryl Holsenbake says, two questions. What did you each study at university? And two, how old were you when you first started reading? We both went to the same university. Yeah. We went there yesterday. We had a visit. It was very nice. There was loads I of new buildings. Been, oh, there. Loads of new buildings. I haven't been, so I graduated. You must have graduated in like 2007. 2008, it was. Okay. Nine years ago, I graduated so I this graduated summer. I graduated in 2011, so we never, we were never there at the same time. No. Did you go? Have you been back since? Yes, I've been back. Uh, last time was 2013 because my friend was doing a master's, so I went yeah. back to stay. I hadn't been back since I graduated. And yeah, it's really changed. It was really weird, really, it's a there, wasn't it? It's, it's really a lovely nice. campus. So we both went to uni- University of Kent in Canterbury. Yeah. Um, both lived in the same place as well, actually. Not in the same. In the same, same place, student village. Very the same near. student village. A couple of um, over. But didn't weren't there the same time. But yeah, it was it was strange to go back. But really yeah. enjoyed what I really loved it. Yeah. It was really, a really nice day as well. It's really, really sunny, blue skies. Yeah, and we're like, yeah. oh, let's go back. Oh look. Oh, Minnie's gone to see Johnny. Look at that. I studied at university sociology and social policy. And I studied um, wildlife conservation. And that's what we studied. Yeah, and what was the other question? Second remember? part was, how old were you when you both first, when you when you first started reading? My mum taught me to read when I was three. Yeah, I was reading before I got to school, like yeah. Matilda. Um, so yeah, I was like young, young, before school. So how yeah. old did you go to school? Four. Five was when you start reception. So I could read before I went to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. That's that. My mum was a reader, so she just... Yeah, like, my mum and dad, yeah, my mum not so much, but my dad was, but I think, yeah, 
always like sitting down with a book. Yeah. I've got a goddaughter and she's so sweet. She just gets it. She's got a little tent and she goes and sits in there and reads her little book. Like she can't read yet, but she's yeah. like uh-huh. two. And she just sits and like reads. It's just so cute yeah, to see. Yeah, that's really cute. And actually, her oh, mum said that once it was her birthday party and all of her friends were like playing with all the toys, she just went and sat in her tent and read uh, her books. I was like, oh, good on her. Uh, and then I think this is the last question. Oh, oh, how could it come to an end so soon? Um, is there a book that one of you absolutely loves that the other absolutely hates? We don't think... We, we, when we saw this question last night, we were going through our Goodreads shelves and we don't think... We've got very, very similar tastes. We were talking about our reading tastes. Because Johnny actually asked us if we had similar reading Yeah. Tests. And we think that, in general, we do. Yeah. The only difference being that I like weirder stuff. And yeah. you don't tend to enjoy that as much. I'm much more into my real list gear, aren't I? So we probably cross over on about 80% of what we like. I would say. Um, so I don't think there's... We both hated My Brilliant Friend. Yeah, so there's... We sort of... When, when we started talking about this, we then started talking about popular books that we had hated that other people had loved. And there was two that were obvious and yeah. my brilliant friend by Elena Ferrante I don't understand everyone I've never known anyone else apart from you yeah like in terms of who has a channel and who's reviewed yeah, it that enjoyed my cousin Laura read it and gave up but she I she, don't I, get it I hated it I, I literally but hate I actually it. feel like I hated it I and I was reading it thinking who yeah. likes this which I, is not a thought I often have I know no, no, I can normally see what other people see in it yeah. I genuinely cannot find anything to see that people like about it it's boring yeah. the character development is rubbish and it's not beautifully written no. it's just basically written the characters are horrible I didn't yeah. care about any of them no, I didn't care. and that's not even like I don't even have to like characters to enjoy a book no I have to care if they live or die yeah and I, and I was just like Pfft. like the whole it's thing war fest yeah it was just a I can complete do, and if it's beautifully fest. written then fine but it wasn't and I was so excited about it. Yeah, me too. I went into it like, this is going to be amazing. I've yeah. heard so many good things. Yeah. I can't wait. And it was just, yeah. tack. And I find it really sad that people say that to them that's something tack. that really represents like tack. female relationships. And I'm like, yeah. that's what we've got. And they fucking hate each other. Yeah, then it's rubbish. Oh, just we awful. We hated that. And the other one we hated. I didn't it. hate this, like, no, I actually much, no. hated Eleanor, like the, I hate Eleanor for a second. I hated that book. Yeah, I did, yeah. But this I'd feel less, I just feel like a bit like, ugh, about, was The Bees by Leyline Paul, mm-hmm. which was really, that was uh, shortlisted for the Bailey's Prize Fiction yeah. a few years ago. Yeah. Um, it's about bees. Bees. Um, sort of anthropomorphized, <laughs> but not. The same story happened three times. Yeah. I don't want to give it away, but literally she'd do something and then some, it would end and then she'd do the exact same thing again and then it would end and then it did it again. And also, like, because of my degree, we did whole modules where yeah, we studied so behavioural ecology and one of the most interesting behavioural systems to study is insects because bees and other animals have really interesting um, social dynamics. Yeah. And so I knew a fair amount about bees. And so reading some woman who's done a little bit of research into it, telling mm. me the bees have pockets, I was like, fuck off. They don't have pockets. <laughs> fuck off, ley line. Yeah, so <laughs> it just annoyed me. She's never done anything since, has she? Do you think that's because of the no. bees? And to me, it was like, I've read, I know a lot of people thought, oh, the bee stuff's really interesting. But yeah. I haven't studied the bee stuff and written essays about it, and that was interesting. Then seeing someone else who knows a lot less about it than the professors I read, yeah. fictionalise it isn't interesting. Yeah, I just... This, I'm I, already... I was reading it not knowing anything about bees. Mercedes is the bee expert, it would seem, <laughs> according to the pocket. Like Wildwood yesterday, when I was getting on there. Yeah, when we went to Wildwood yesterday, there was quite a lot of children's questions that... <laughs> We'll put as a quiz. We'll say he's got all of them right. Yeah, I did. I've got. Five out I don't five. even know if I've got any right. You've got one. You've got five. Five out of five. Look at Minnie looking out the window. She's so lovely, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Such a lovely girl. Um, so yeah, I, my degree paid for me to get those five questions right. Basically, it's all worth it. All worth it in the end, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all worth it paid off. Yeah. yeah. So neither of us really were into the bees, but I think that's like maybe. I'm sure I could eke out some other stuff that I absolutely hated, but. Yeah. I cannot, when I think about books that I absolutely hated, have you ever read H's for Hulk? No, I haven't. I hated that too. Did you? Because that's got such positive... I know, that was another one that blew my mind. I just don't, the reason I haven't gone for it is because I know she talks a lot about um, that author, T.H. Yeah. And I started reading his book and I was like, this is really shit. So I don't really want to, I don't really know if I want to hear her talk about him because if she talks about his books and I don't like his books. I found it, and I used to be like what David describes as a bird nerd when I was younger. I, I used to go bird well. watching and things. How are you caught enough? I don't know, <laughs> stomping down there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh right, there's a robin! <laughs> <laughs> I do like robins as well. <laughs> so 
so yeah so i come to that thinking oh great i'm gonna love this yeah, yeah. and it was dull i'll tell you another thing i hate about it just pages and pa- not any paragraphs just pages oh, really? of just blocks of text yeah, forever and ever and ever yeah. and i was like oh and yeah disappointed for that that's another one i love the front cover and then ended yeah up, a nice cover yeah yeah and it ended up being terrible and as when I heard about it, my dad is also really into birds, but reads his reading go to is what's he say, David? Uh, cheap Cheap science fiction. Cheap science fiction. <laughs> Books that are like sixty nine P on the Kindle oh, right, that are okay. just like self published yeah, piles yeah. of crap. And I was like, Great, a non fiction book about a bird yeah. and a lot to do with like hawks and things like that. I yeah. was into. No, it was so dull. But that's another one that yeah, yeah I've not read it, yeah. Just fits in everything. But that's it. That's all the questions. But there was loads of questions, but we've whittled them down. So people were asking where we get our books from. Yeah. So we've. I get a books. I get books. I get books from. I try and buy books from independent bookshops. So when we do like booktuber meetups, oh, yeah, or if yeah. like I always allow myself to be with people who are bookish and buy books. Yeah, like definitely. Always, if I go into an independent bookshop, I will work really hard to find a book in there that I want. Yeah. Um. I buy quite a lot of stuff on Amazon. Yeah. Book depository, it's not so much second-hand bookshops anymore. No. I mean, I either get sent stuff. Yeah. Or... Get sent stuff. Or I ask for it for birthday or Christmas. Yeah, birthday presents, Christmas or presents. Or I buy stuff when we go book shopping. And yeah. I buy from an independent bookshop or a second-hand bookshop. Yeah. I, I would never really buy anything from someone like You know those bookshops we go to when we go on the bookshops thing? Yeah. Which one's your fave? I really enjoy Scoob because I feel like you can find lots of Scoob, gems yeah. in Scoob. I, they're, they're very highly priced compared to second-hand bookshops where I'm from. Yeah. But then there's stuff, there's way more variety. So you're talking yeah. like four pounds for a really good condition paperback, so it's probably like 50% off. Yeah. But it's usually in like new condition. Yeah. And I just, I love the hunting aspect yeah. about Scoob. I like that. Oh, oh and um, all, uh, any amount of books. That's really good because it's got loads of new yes, ones. Yes, any amount of any amount of books is my favourite. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, it's really small, but it's basically it would appear that loads of people who work for publishers yeah. get sent stuff and then just don't want to keep it all and they just literally drop it off there. And they're really reasonable as well. Yeah, and sometimes, which is a bit bad, they have stuff that isn't even out yet. Yeah, I've got a few. And they have it in a finished hardback in there for a fiver. Yeah, it's very very reasonable. It's and really you got good. the King's General in there, didn't you? Didn't really rub that in very much, though, did no, you? No, I didn't. I was really nice about it when I. I owned it now, so I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> Well, and yours has got a biro mark on it and mine hasn't. Oh yeah, mine has, yeah. So <laughs> I put it in my bag. You did. No, I thought you had a biro mark when you bought it. Oh, did And it? you were like, oh, it's got biro mark, but I'm definitely going to get it. Oh, right. And I was like, you. wait, that's so wait, so you put it back down again. No, I wouldn't get it, but I was even saying, so <laughs> yeah. That was it, yeah. So I like any amount of books. Oh, I'm mm. looking forward. We're going book shopping in a few weeks' time, aren't we? Yep. And we might go in one today. There's a, we're going to Whitstable today to have a little look up and down the old Is there a bookshop? Uh, there is, yeah. I can't think what it's called, but Sarah Moss mentions it in. Um... <laughs> Run to the middle of our kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> just to check, get them all. What if they go? This is a weird thing about Ducky's Mario. This is just a chat now. This isn't yeah. even any questions. I had. Simon said to me, Oh, I need to get Royal Britannia in, in a you nice edition. They haven't, I've looked. You made it up. So Lauren <laughs> was convinced she saw the new edition of Royal Britannia. Yeah, in like with Bunt. How have I got this so clear in my head then with Bunting and it had like Rule Britannia wi- written within yeah, the Bunting. Yeah, really specific. Yeah, and like with the Virago Modern Classic spine that we are all sort of semi-collecting. Well, I've, I looked us. on the Virago website and I can't find so it. So did I, Miss yeah. Sadie. So where has it come from? I don't know. Maybe you, they just did like a newsletter of what it's going to look like. Are you subscribed to the newsletter? No. I am. I need to. So next time they let me know about a new Daphne Dubai out, I'm not going to tell you because you should be subscribed to the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm subscribed to the newsletter. It's quite the... That's a bit rude. <laughs> um, yeah, so maybe we'll buy some Daphne Tomorrow's. Yeah. They're the books I allow myself to buy as well. So if I'm ever in a Waterstone, so like yeah. James and I go, and I'm like, oh, I see a Daphne Tomorrow in there, the Virago Modern Classics, I'll let myself buy one. Yeah, me too. Uh, That's well, how I've ended up with a scapegoat that I need to get around to reading as well. Yeah, and I've got a few. And the reason being is because Virago nice editions, they yeah. tend not to reprint them loads. So no. if you see some new Virago collections that you like, then buy them now. Get them. Because it could be that in two years' time they don't reprint them. No. And you can't get them. And because Simon, 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 Simon had collected all the Daphne de Maurier's in the old Virago classics yeah. and then they bought out these, frankly, better yeah, front covers. Yeah. And so that's why when I see them, I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, but I was collecting the hardbacks. So I've got half in the fancy hardbacks. The fancy hardbacks are beautiful. And half in the paperbacks. I don't really mind that because I put them near each other still and they still look nice. But I've got her more popular ones in the hardbacks and her less known ones in the paperbacks. I've still got to get the loving spirit. 
Yeah. That's quite often. I've seen that if you, when we went to the when Simon and I went to uh, the I can't think what it's called Ling, Lingham's or something mm. the bookshop in where he lives. Um, I bought my cousin Rachel and he bought Loving Spirit. Yeah. Birds I often see as well. I need to pick that up as well. I that one. Is it in the hardback? I think the, the patterns on those are lovely though, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They, the, and the birds and the dolls are like sort of Art Deco. I've got both of those that Simon gave me in the old Virago yeah. ones. So I do own them, but I haven't read them. Good old Daphne Damari. We just talk about that forever. Yeah, we could. We should have done a video on that, shouldn't we? Here's a video about Daphne Damari. Yeah. Oh, we should have done that. Yeah. We were also going to do a video about getting our... Um, Hogwarts house. Well, I was going to do it, but uh, I'm glad yeah. didn't now. Too much pressure. You wouldn't have got Gryffindor. Yes, I would have done. You wouldn't, because I've done it and I got Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. Because all it is is it says, "Oh, here's two photos. Which one do you prefer?" You just, do you just, think it's, it's random you, then? No, but I think there's an algorithm behind it. But that how you answer twenty basic questions doesn't define what your personality is. No. Don't let I, it get to you. Just, I don't want. <laughs> you're a Gryffindor. I'm a Gryffindor. <laughs> David got Hufflepuff though. David was delighted when um, Eddie Redmayne got Hufflepuff last night. Both of these guys are Hufflepuffs. Us with our Hufflepuff boyfriends. Yep. Yeah. A couple of Hufflepuff lovers. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for today. Hope you've all enjoyed it. What have you got planned for the weekend? Have you got something? Um, not really. Here tonight. Burgers tonight. Yeah, burritos for breakfast, burgers for dinner. Oh, it's like a perfect day. Breakfast burritos were nice, weren't they? Yeah, they were good. I am pleased with those. More so than the cannelloni that I didn't cook. <laughs> yeah. So that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all again soon. Goodbye. Bye.